Hey guys, uh, Brian Castro here with uh, Better Chess Training, and today I am on the Internet Chess Club. Uh, I'm playing someone that you've seen before on this channel, uh, Papa Fred on uh, ICC, and uh, I think um, we played several times. And uh, last time uh, in the last game from last week, I I, uh, I won. So I think he's looking out for a little. Uh, revenge today. So we are going to try our best and see what we can do here. Um, Papa Fred's a good player and so he's not one to be underestimated. And uh, here we're opening up with an exchange French and so this should be should be interesting. Um, I play a variation. Uh, I try not to make it uh, French um, exchange games can be very symmetrical sometimes, and so I play a variation that uh, tries to avoid that. You can see that here with my knights here. Um, knight on e7 here, the idea is that if he tries to pin me, then I can play f6. And my idea here is I'm going to probably castle queenside. Okay? So... Um, Let's see how it goes. Uh, I am uh, preparing, I mentioned this in my last video, I am preparing a little series on uh, positional play and um, just gathering some of the positions for that. I was thinking that maybe I would um, start the first one today, but I'm actually going to do them on Fridays, I think, and then on Wednesdays maybe do these games with uh, commentary uh, for the next few weeks. Um, Looking forward to that. Should be helpful for me and hopefully uh, very helpful for you uh, with regard to understanding positional play. Okay. So, so far, so good. Uh, this is pretty standard so far, and I'm going to castle queenside. And you can kind of see the ideas here is that white is going to push these pawns and try to attack me on the queen side and I will play f6 g5 h5 maybe and try to attack him on the king side you can see uh, my bishops here are pointing or at least this bishops pointing in this direction as well uh, however uh, we always have to look at our specific positions and see how um, you know how we should proceed and okay so he is uh, attacking my knight here. Um, I don't see that as a big threat. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking is that uh, he might want to try to play something like knight to e5. Um, I don't think I need to worry. I don't, I'm not going to try to kick him away because I don't want to weaken this pawn structure uh, quite yet. But what I'm going to do, I'm thinking, is f6. And it keeps that knight from popping in over there. So let's start out with that. Um, typically, I don't see this move very often. But it doesn't mean that it's not a good move. But it's uh, definitely uh, something that's a little newer to me. Okay. Um, here he's looking to... Uh, well, he's directly attacking this on here, and the best move might just be to scooch my king over one, like so. Okay, uh, h6 now would probably not be, or a6 would probably not be so great because he can sacrifice this bishop and get a lot of uh, play here. Uh, by moving my king over, I can even do something like scooching my queen over to f5, for example, or maybe backing it up to f8 or um, c8, so I can move my move my knight. Now this knight is no longer pinned.
Okay, uh, he's attacking my bishop. So the question is what to do with it. Should I drop it back here to h5? And then wait, what I can do there is always bring it over here to f7, for example, or g6. Or I can just drop it to um, f5 so that it keeps an eye this way, but also can at some point maybe sacrifice here on um, h3. So that is another idea. Um, let me think for a moment if there's anything else. Definitely want that's kind of my primary threat right now. So just deciding on a plan. So um, if the queen were still here on d1, I might want to, I would maybe think of something like that. The idea of dropping it here and then dropping it here um, is possible also because at some point this pawn or this pawn might exchange itself if he pushes c4. Um, so that might be nice to think of. Uh, it might, however, be helpful to keep it on uh, here if I do advance these pawns to, to help with that attack. Uh, so let me think which one would be the better way. If I drop it back this way and he plays g4, and then I play it back, then I can, at some point, you know, push h5 as well. Um, decisions, decisions. I, I don't know if it's necessarily a good versus bad one, but just trying to optimize. If I do play it to f5, he could maybe attack it here with knight to h4. Um, again, I don't uh, see... Well, I'm going to drop it to f... see well let's consider this if i drop to f5 he plays knight to h4 what would i respond um bringing it here is a possibility i don't like that it's on this same file but it's not in immediate danger and then i could always drop it back that way um you know what? let's do that i don't see this as such a big threat at the moment And then if I can get g5 in, then it won't be a threat at all. The nice thing here, too, is that it does. This e6 square I have found sometimes can be uh, become weak because if I advance the g5 pawn, uh, the f6 square uh, pawn can become a target if he can penetrate on the, the e file. So um, having this bishop covering it here is okay. Uh, now, like I said, if he tries to chase it away, I can back up. And in a way, he kind of loses some time with this knight anyway. So I don't have to worry about losing time with my bishop, I guess. And this pin right now isn't really a threat. Um, well, I can't move the knight, of course, but there's no way he can attack it again. At the moment so now the other thing I do need to think about is what will I do if he plays c4 okay this is interesting uh, bringing his knight over here um, actually can I just pin his knight <laughs> with a uh, bishop to c2 well, let's take a look what his threat is uh, well he is threatening to play knight to to a5 now which would be troublesome I'm wondering if I could just play b6 and then but it, does, it would tie up my pieces here a little bit I can play b6 uh, that would definitely prevent that I could even play bishop to c2 which I think would be very interesting although I do have to be careful because he can open up the a file there um, This knight to c5 could be annoying too. So the idea, or my, I would be weakening these light squares here, but it would definitely prevent this knight from coming in. I could also just pin it because this queen can't really go anywhere too useful. 
uh, to get out of the pin. Because this dark square bishop's covering these squares, this square is covered. So this would be an interesting tactical way of taking care of that. The other thing I can do is just almost ignore it, maybe even counterattack here and with uh, sacrificing this bishop. Because if he takes it, queen takes, and I'm on his knight here. Um, I don't know if I have enough firepower to finish it off, though. From Well, actually, bishop takes h3, g takes h3, queen takes h3, threatening this knight. And then, because these knights are protecting each other, there's um, the threat here would be a mate. Well, after threatening this, well, he would just bring his knight back, I suppose. Um, so, okay. Well, I'll keep that in the back burner. Uh, I don't like this b6 move is natural in this opening sometimes, but because of this pin, it gets can be a little annoying. Um, Oh, and then he can sacrifice, for example, he can play rook. He can sacrifice his rook for two minor pieces. I do that too. So so bishop to c2 actually looks like it could be, could be a move to make. Um, actually, I'm wondering, could I just play queen to f8? Because then this pin, there's no pin here. And then it covers, I can play h6 after that. Queen to f8, so he can't, if he takes, I just take back. Um, and then if he takes this knight, I can just take with the knight now, and then there's no double sacrifice here. So b6 is definitely not in the cards, I don't think. Um, now, what happens if I play queen to f6 and then he plays his knight here to c5? Well, then I have to consider whether or not I want to chop it off with this bishop. Actually, at that point, something like queen to ta bishop takes h3 becomes more of a threat. Because remember, he doesn't have a checkmating threat at the moment. So I could take the time... I could take this here. I guess I'm just saying there's the, the combination here is using this dark square bishop and this queen here to checkmate this king. And the reason why I wouldn't do it right now is because he can bring this knight back. However, if he brings his knight to c5, um, this threat now becomes more, you know, more uh, active, I guess you could say. So... Let's see here. Um, I like queen to f8. Let's try that. Just getting out of the pin here. Um, and I could even bring my bishop back here. So it's a flexible move that gives me some um, options. So a6 is now possible, perhaps because this queen is protecting h6. Uh, knight to c5, like I said, um, is also a possibility. But, you know, like I said, we're, we're going to see what we can do here. So I feel fairly secure here uh, with my king. Um, so I'm wondering, it, it kind of depends on what he does next. I can start to bring my pawns up, advance my pawns too, and start to pressure. So instead of sacrificing a bishop, I can kind of use the same plan, but just use my g pawn to drive in, to drive in here. In a way, I can almost ignore if he plays knight to c. Five because I don't see him. I mean, if he wants to sacrifice some material, I suppose he can try that. But 
Um, I just don't see it be, being very uh, successful. And then if I if he does play that, I could reassess because that I could always take it off with bishop. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, rook to e2. So I wonder if he's seeing this bishop to c2 move here, or if he's preparing to bring his bishop out and then bring his other rook over. Um, let's see. Is there any problems with that move? That's a good question. Is there anything I can do to take advantage of that? I don't think so. So it's going to take him a couple moves to get set with that. Can I play g5 right now? Um, actually, actually, can I just force him to exchange this bishop? I can play... So here's a couple thoughts. I can play g5 right now. Planning g4. Okay? Because then I've got... I can take back with the bishop here. Uh, the other idea is that... I can, oh, is he planning, you know what, I'm wondering if he's planning to bring this knight around. I can take it with the bishop, I guess. Um, the other idea here is to play a6 and force the exchange of this bishop, because he no longer, like I said, he no longer has this sacrifice here. Uh, I mean, he can sacrifice it, but, but it'll only be for one pawn, because his queen is protecting uh, that would take a lot of the pressure off, but I'm not really feeling too threatened by it. So I'm actually thinking g5 might be a better move here to advance my own things. Um, so g5, and then let's say he plays bishop to e3, and then g4. So this is based on my assessment that his plan is to double here on the e-file. And again, maybe he's just trying to cover this c2 square from my bishop. So... Um, okay, let's play g5. I kind of like that anyway right now because it will prevent him from getting, you know, getting this knight active also. So let's see what his plan is. And uh, that's the beauty about chess is that you can guess what his plans are based on his moves and the structure of his pieces, uh, the coordination of his pieces. But it is it takes two to play a game, which is uh, uh, why we do it. I think I mentioned this in the last game. I played Papa Fred a few times. Uh, I have four wins against him, three losses, and a draw. So we've played uh, eight games together. So I have a four and a half score against him. Uh, with Black, I'm actually uh, one win and two losses and a draw. Uh, and those are just some statistics um, that I can access here on the Internet Chess Club. So, okay, here comes that knight to c5. Um, again, I'm not sure what the... You know, if there's some type of threat here, uh, I guess I should consider um, some any of these sacrifices here that he might want to try to make. Um, knight to a6, check. Uh, here, I can even just move my king over. I don't have to take it. If I take it, he comes in with the bishop, maybe. Um... I could see where that can be a little dangerous, okay? But can I just ignore it? I mean, here he can't really, he coming in here is uh, suicide for the night. Same thing here. And now, can I just play g4? So there's a couple ideas. I can ignore this altogether. I can take it with my bishop. 
Uh, the only thing about taking it with the bishop that I don't like, well, well actually, it's actually a pretty big deal, which is probably why I'm not going to do it. If I take it with the bishop, he takes back with the uh, d-pawn, and now this d4 square is available to this knight. So that's something to always consider when you're trading pieces. What squares are you giving up to your opponent? Okay, so g4 is a definitely a possibility that I kind of like. Uh, I'm not going to take it, as I mentioned. Um, and now, now a6 is not available because he's got too much firepower coming in here. And I would, I think, leave my king too exposed. So, um, with that in mind, what should we do? I like g4 because uh, I'm putting pressure on... I think, okay, let's look at that. If I play g4 and he plays, so one idea is if he were to play something like knight takes b7, okay, so that's a thematic, that's, you know, that's a possible sacrifice. I think I take back with the queen, and then my queen, if he attacks me with this bishop, I can just go to a to b6, okay, so I think that would be a mistake. The The bigger threat here would, would be something like, um, actually now bishop to a6, okay. Uh, however, on that, then I think I can just take on, I would take on c5, okay? So I think that's what I would do there. I think I can just go ahead and do that. Again, uh, my time is running a little low. You know, I'd probably do a little more calculating, but I think this is definitely a fair move. And the idea here is whenever he makes a move like this, definitely this knight's on a good square, but you have to see if it is something that you need to take away time from your own plans. Okay. Okay, so um, g takes h3, and then if he takes here, I can actually just play this check here even uh, with my pawn, and then take here with the queen. He would get his knight here on, he could get his knight here on e6, but I really am not too worried about that, to tell you the truth. So, um... I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Hope I'm not missing something that I... <laughs> yeah, definitely you can take this here, but uh, I'm liking my position. This bishop is going to play a crucial role here, or an important role. So we don't want to... Um, so we don't want to... Uh, exchange it frivolously okay so i kind of have a little nice dynamic here these uh, knights are protecting each other um i'm expecting him to take this bishop now it's even better if he if he you know takes here then i'm just one upon i think i'm just one upon in any case but uh I think when I play g4, his best move was just to take it, take it here. Because now I'm opening up his position. So see now this g file is open. Um, yeah, this is looking. This is looking nice. So while I'm waiting for the move, I should take a look at some of his his threats. Again, these sacrifices here, I don't think have any, um, you know, really caused me any trouble. There's no, the reason I can do all of this on his king side is because he doesn't have any immediate threats, or at least none that I've seen, in order to either win a lot of material or checkmate my king. Because that would be bad, <laughs> of course. So... Probably did not anticipate me taking here. Um, I think he has to take my bishop. And then I have a choice of either taking his... Um, if he takes my bishop, I can save this pawn maybe by playing this check. Um, or I could just take back the knight and leave this tension here. Because if he advances this, for example, then 
I think that just leads to mate because I could just play queen to f3. So I think he's, it went from sort of a, an evenish game, I think, to one where I think now uh, I've got an advantage. Um, I mean, if he wants, he can try to simplify a little by making some exchanges here, but I don't think that. I don't think I have anything to worry about anymore. Well, we're playing a game of chess, so I need to worry about <laughs> his moves and make sure I'm making the best moves possible. So. so I guess one of the things that you want to be thinking about and I want to be thinking about when it's your opponent's move is, is uh, what is his best move? You know, try to find what is the biggest threat that he has. Uh, here, um, you know, I'm looking at, you know, starting out with uh, forcing moves like checks and threats and captures. So capturing, uh, so the big ones we here would be capturing this um, bishop. Okay, we've discussed that. Uh, he can try one of these sacrifices. And uh, I think we've discussed that. If he does try knight to a6 check, I'm even just thinking you know, I can just scooch over to a8 and not take that knight. Um, if he takes this bishop, I just take back with the knight. Then this knight is this knight is protected. Okay. So maybe this was uh, the mistake here. I think was allowing this capture here. I think he thought I was, well, I was thinking about it. I think he thought I was going to have to deal with this first. But then I realized I didn't have to. Well, I'll have a moment. I think I've thought about this for a little bit. So I uh, just want to give you a little uh, heads up on some of the things I'm thinking about here. So I do have this positional series. And the idea there is, uh, I do believe there are a lot of great sources of material for positional chess out there. Um, I mentioned a few books on this channel, and I have some listed on my uh, website, betterchesstraining.com. Um, but what I wanted to do with the series is kind of give you a flavor for it. You know, like I said, uh, many of you are intermediate beginning players. And uh, what I want to do is give you an introduction to these concepts so you can start reflecting on them and trying to see them in your games. And then as you enhance or enrich your knowledge with uh, some of these other sources, whether it be ebooks like on Chessable um, or, or just regular uh, chess books, some of these classics, uh, then you'll be speaking the same language. And so I'm really looking forward to working on that. Like I said, I'm gathering some of the positions and games that I'm going to be using as examples now. Uh, many of them are master games. Uh, a couple of the examples are from my own play. Um, but again, it's really the ones that really exemplify uh, the themes that we're going to be talking about. Okay. Um, very interesting. So he is going for this... Uh, sacrifice here on b7, and I think I could just take back with the queen. Um, because, so the other thing to think about here is that, oh, I see his idea here. Okay. Um, if I take back with the queen, I see. So here's his idea. He's going to if I take with the queen here, this one is hanging. Um, so I guess the question is, do I have my own in-between move that I can play? Okay, I didn't consider that. Um, so here, well, actually, queen takes, 
And then he plays... Okay, uh, a little more complicated here. So, can I, I don't think I can ignore this. Can I play an in-between move that would improve the position somewhat? Um, for example, do I just, can I get this in-between check in? Taking with the king is definitely bad because of the skewer here on a6, by the way. So queen takes, and then... If he takes with the knight first, I take back with the knight, but then he takes this knight. Now, can I get really complicated here and play something crazy like rook to g8, just threatening this check here? Actually, you know, an interesting move here would be something like h2 check, and then bishop to h3 threatening this bishop here. And then if he takes, opens up this file, and, yeah, boy. This is very interesting, guys. Do I just let him take the pawn? I can actually play... Um, I can just leave this one alone. Oh, you know what the problem is? Is that now this knight is underprotected. I think I'm going to lose a pawn here. Um, this is good. I didn't see this. Uh, and so... Well, I'm gonna. I'm winning this pawn here. I can hit him with this check first, then go from there. Hit him with this check. King obviously has to move to h1. Then I could bring this bishop back here. I think I have to take this knight. I don't think I could leave it alone. All right. All right, a little surprise there, but we're going to keep fighting. We're not going to uh, let him go here. I, I, I like this tension here, so I didn't want to play h2 check and then have him cut it off at some point with, like, f4. Uh, kind of a double-edged position here. Uh, I, material is even, just to get things straight for you guys. Um, but but it is uh, definitely an interesting position. So I still have this H2 check as an option in the future, should any uh, shenanigans happen. <laughs> so it uh, should be interesting here. Um, question, what do I do if he takes this knight? Or this bishop. Then I think I have to take back with the knight. And then he can take this knight. 
And then I would play... Okay. So... Take the knight. Actually, you know what? Let's get this check in first. Reason why is that I want to get this king to h1 because now this knight would have some forking ideas on g3, potentially. So. After he moves his king, he has to move it to h1. Okay? If he moves it to f1, then I promote. And then actually you checkmate him. So it has to move to h1. Should be a quick, easy decision on his part. Okay. And then I'm going to take this knight. He's going to take my knight. And then I'm going to move my queen, I believe, to b6. But let me just double check this. Um, yeah, definitely think I have to take this knight here. And then... Now, he's going to get this one, so material will be even. Okay, we both have two minor pieces. Uh, the difference is that... Well, let's see here. Maybe I'm gonna, I might want to bring it back to F8. Well, no, I, I like... No, I can't bring it to f8 because of the queen check. All right, it's got to go to b6. Then I am going to bring my... The yeah, thing I don't like about this right now is that I cannot get a rook to the e file to, to get in on here. Um, okay, I'm going to win that pawn. That's okay. Actually, now I can't get a rook here either. So, uh, my position is um, not quite what I would like it to be. Actually, I can win this. There's a tactic here. Um, I can play bishop to g3. Threatening this bishop. Um, then he could just play something like bishop to... Well, some interesting tactics here. I could play something like bishop to g3, and then, of course, with the trap, if he takes it, I fork here. But then if he plays his bishop to attack this knight, I can pin it with my rook. Okay, let's try that. All right, this might not be the best play, but I've got three minutes left on the clock, and I want to give you something interesting to look at that we can analyze afterward. Um, and the idea, again, if he plays his um, bishop over here somewhere, then I can pin it. Now, if he, now, what he could do is just drop back his bishop, in which case I can just drop back my bishop. Because one of the one of the ideas right now is that his um, this is actually a decent move too, because I can actually just bring my knight back here at some point also. 
he really needs to develop this bishop, this bishop here, his uh, c1 bishop, because this rook's been out of play for the whole game. Um, Actually, that was a pretty nifty move, I think. Um, if he threatens... Well, the thing is, he's, um, he's got a lot of weaknesses on his back rank, so he really can't afford to... He can't afford to keep this weak here, so... Because right now he thinks, okay, he is dropping that back. And so now... Well, now it's no longer pinned. But... Running out of time here, let's see. Can I bring my queen into the attack with something like... Oh no, then he's got this queen. No, he doesn't have that queen check. He does not have that queen check if I bring it over here. Um, let's see here. I could do something even like queen to Well, this is interesting. What if I did something like knight takes d4? Knight takes d4, c takes d4. Then queen takes d4, threatening multiple bad things to him. All right, let's try that. Okay, this is, we're getting a little, you know, this is, you know, a little bit crazy, but. Okay. So we just sacrificed our knight here. And here, um, Now, if I take here, there is this check. Um, then I could just bring it back if he takes. I take there. I think I take here with the rook. Now, if he takes my bishop, then I take his bishop here, threatening checkmate here. So there's a lot of tactics here, which we'll, we'll definitely have to go over after this game. But uh, uh, it's very interesting. I don't know if my sacrifices are sound. <laughs> um, but sometimes you need to... Uh, you know what, guys? Sometimes you need to have fun. Um, but if it's especially if it's based on an idea. Uh, I think uh, something that Capablanca wrote about making mistakes... Uh, that, that when you see an idea, like don't just sacrifice and say, oh, I'm going to sacrifice. But if you see a, an idea that maybe has some fruition, uh, I know uh, late Grandmaster Edward uh, Gufeld used to play like this. He would play very creative moves, 
Um, and they weren't always correct, but but in a tournament game with clocks on board, there was always a chance. And then he always found beautiful ideas based on the geometry of the board or some thematic idea. So you know, let me just talk about this one a little while. It's not my move. So the thing is, this bishop taking it opens up this diagonal, which is why it's... Okay, so what he's doing here is cross-pinning me here. Um, that's very interesting. Um, but the... Uh, does he have some problems here? All right. I think I have to sacrifice. All right, so we still have some mating threats here. That's why the sacrifice actually, uh, again, this um, if he takes here, I take his rook, and then I'm threatening mate in two here, okay? Um, if he takes my, my queen. Now, the nice thing about this is that his queen will be threatened, and he doesn't have a safe check to get out. Okay, so uh, the best thing he can do, perhaps, is to try to um, all right. He goes in for it. I'm going in for it. There's not much time here. Um, notice that if he tries to check me here, well. Well, if he checks me here, I'll just take his bishop, and that'll actually be, be very close to being ahead of material. Okay. So, do I have a safe place to go here? If I go here, I think I have to I have to take his bishop. Then he can check me. This might not be a win, guys, but some very interesting uh, tactical ideas um, that are going to be worth analyzing. Okay, um, I think I just have to, let's go here. So I'm probably going to lose this bishop and probably the game, but it was worth a shot. You can actually check me and then take his bishop back here. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So here we are going to resign. Yeah, good game. All right. You know what? I don't feel well. I feel a little bad about it, but <laughs> uh, don't feel too bad about it. But the key is to try to learn from the game. And hopefully uh, you found it very interesting. So let's take a look at it. Okay, uh, let's go back to uh, some of the key points in the game. And in this particular position, I mentioned that, um, well, in the game I played queen to f8 with the idea that I have some flexibility of what to do next. And here, uh, after a little bit of analysis, uh, I remember I mentioned that, that sacrifice on h3 was something I was definitely thinking about. And it ends up being a pretty nice move here. If he plays this um, g takes h3, then queen takes h3, uh, of course, is threatening uh, eventually this combination here. And then, of course, I'm directly threatening the knight right away. So uh, probably his best move here is, or one of his best moves is to uh, defend with rook to e3. But then that gives me a chance to bring my knight in like this. Okay. And here, if you were, say, to move back like that, unfortunately, it, it allows this 
move right here. Of course, if he takes, then I get this combination, which uh, hopefully you guys are familiar with um, at this point. But uh, this is a well-known uh, mating pattern that you should all learn. Okay. Uh, actually, let's just go back and just look at that real quick. So the idea here is that the queen is covering uh, all of these squares and that we're going to force a checkmate um, on F2. So the key here is that F2 is not not be guarded. Okay, so we check the king. The king is forced back this way. And then we do a discovered check so that the bishop now is attacking F2. And when the king goes here, we just have a two-move checkmate with queen to H2 check, king to F1, and queen to F2 mate. Now let's go back to the... Uh, original the game position after bishop takes h3 after this variation um, the best move for white is not to take here as we saw that's very bad but just to uh, to defend here okay and then probably white can can go back here to uh, g4 um, or f5 at that point okay and then we've uh, essentially won a pawn here okay um Going back, let's see here. Actually, in this particular position, um, f5 probably isn't the best move. Probably something like e6, because if they're bishop to f5, he can play this move here, which I mentioned during the game, uh, because I can't take back with the knight. So if I take back with, the, let's say, the bishop, then, um, then he gets this pin off here okay um, instead we would take back with the queen but then um, he could win win some material here uh, again be dangerous to play something like this uh, actually it's not horrible uh, but he could even you know just grab that pawn for example or even come in like something like this with this uh, potential um, fork okay so uh going back here in the game i played queen to f8 but bishop takes h3 which i had thought about uh would have been an interesting alternative okay here's the uh, second position here of note and a uh, very tactical position so it took me a little bit of time to uh, calculate some uh ideas here and in the game uh as we saw um i played G takes h3. And the problem there, uh, as he played in the game, was it allows this knight takes b7, which was kind of the start of all my troubles. Um, so had I maybe, and I, and I remember I had looked at knight takes b3, but thought that I could take just take back here, but tactically didn't remember <laughs> or didn't calculate the consequences of that. Um, so instead, what I could have done um, is just take here, chop this off, and then after he takes back, then go with g takes h3. Because now um, he's in a little bit of trouble. You know, for example, if he takes here with the knight, my queen gets in. Okay? And this rook is going to come over, attacking here. Uh, obviously, this is terrible. If he takes here, I'm going to check him. And uh, he's in a lot of trouble. Okay? If he tries to scooch out this way, I'm going to take here. And as he keeps trying to move here... Um, it's just, um, you know, he, I've got a lot of pressure coming in, okay? I could even open some lines with, like, d4, okay? And the idea here is that if, for example, he takes, then now my knight gets in on the game. So, uh, so that doesn't look very good. Let's go back real quick. Uh, okay, so if I take here, he takes back, and then I take here. Now... Uh, probably the best move for him is to try to close this off somehow or try to bring his queen into action here. So let's say he plays g3. Then, again, now, remember, this knight isn't pinned anymore. I can bring this knight in, targeting this square. Again, I'm not worried about this trade. If he takes here, for example, I take back with the queen. And here I'm threatening uh, this move here. So um, let's say he blocks that. And then I think I can just take a move to build up, okay? Bring this in, okay? So now this is this pawn is pinned. So you can see that 
it gets very dangerous for uh, for white. Let's just take this another move or two. Let's say he brings his guy up here, and then um, see will this check work? There's just a lot I can do. I can even just play something like this, threatening this bishop. Okay, his position is totally open. My king is still quite safe. So uh, this looks very good for me as well. So going back here, the idea is I, I, I underestimated this threat uh, before I made my move here. And so I should have uh, recognized the consequences of that. And that would have taken a little more calculation, maybe a couple moves further to see that I could be in a little bit of danger had I played that move uh, or had I ignored it, which I did. And then even without calculating, having recognized that, I could maybe thought, well, let's just chop that off because I know that I'm winning uh, that I'm winning over here with G takes H3. Okay, I just want to finish up with uh, this position. And this was kind of a shot in the dark. After knight takes B7, my, my game is losing. Uh, I, I, I am uh, at a fairly big disadvantage here. Um, this was kind of a shot in the dark. And the idea, of course, here was it's sort of a trap. And I don't encourage you to do that, do these type of things. But um, that was the tactical idea. Uh, easily avoided by my opponent who plays probably the best move, which is bishop here. And I probably play the best response, which is to pin that bishop. So it's very tactical here. My opponent again responds uh, with a very good move, queen to c2, protecting there. And um, here I played uh, knight takes, which again is unsound, but I think the idea here was... Uh, here is sort of the idea. Let's say he were to go ahead and take that. Obviously, that would be checkmate. Again, very simple trap, easily averted by my opponent. Um, but maybe I was low on time, as you can see on the clocks here, so I was getting a little desperate. Uh, but here it's totally lost. So let's see. Uh, not much better I can do at this point. Um, taking here to preserve uh, these threats is an idea. If he takes back with the queen... Um, you know, I've got little kind of dinky ideas here, but I don't really see... Here, here it's basically lost as well. Um, so taking uh, there doesn't really do anything. At this point, um, I'm just uh, down material. Uh, and so, again, sort of a desperate threat here. Um, at first I was thinking something like queen takes would be interesting, but then... Bishop to e3 just shuts everything down here. Uh, queen takes here, and then he could just win with this discovered check. Okay, so uh, I think that's uh, that's all we're going to show there. Um, you can see I did have some tactical ideas behind it. Uh, in this case, though, I did learn a lot. Uh, I know I talk a lot about positional chess and kind of grinding out the, these victories in the end game, but sometimes tactics and being able to fight hand to hand. Uh, move by move is very important, and this this time I uh, came out on the uh, the wrong side of it. But uh, that's how we learn, and uh, hope you uh, learn something as well. Hey guys, uh, Brian Castro here with Better Chess Training. Uh, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please press that like button and uh, come back and check out the upcoming series on a positional play that I'm going to be presenting over the next few weeks. Uh, so that's going to be on Fridays. Uh, and again, if you're new to this channel, uh, Better Chess Training is about helping you to become the hero, the hero of your own chess story. And uh, I would be honored to join you on your journey. So uh, hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Good luck with your chess.